So the main feature of reverse engineering process is to create a sketch and then from that sketch doing to do a revol revolution, extrusion, and so on. So let, to make a sketch, it's fairly easy. You either go to sketch and mesh sketch to create from a mesh or sketch to create from nothing. And then you have, otherwise you have the ability to go to sketch and mesh sketch. The other solution would be to go on the screen to put the mouse on the plane, right mouse click and mesh sketch. Here you can move up and down to get the height of what you would like to get. So here I'm going to go to 2.5 millimeters. This sketch is projected on the base plane always. You can put draft angle, uh, exclude round corners and things like that. And press OK. Then I will switch my screen, so alt space or you can hide the mesh here. And I can create some features. So I can create a rectangle using that here, over here and there. The software fits automatically uh, the, the different lines and connect all the endpoints. Uh, then from that, you can, of course, defines, define the length. This length can be rounded, of course, the, the height and the length. If you need to, you can also take this point, this endpoint, and constrain it to the origin. So here you have a constraint, and you see that your sketch is black, so which means it's fully constrained. Uh, and then you can do whatever you want in terms of, of sketching and exit. Otherwise, you can also create here a slot. So just fit a slot with rectangle, it's going to be better, and drag here, and you create a slot. The slot is got parallel lines and tangency on the corners. You can always create a, a horizontal constraint on top of that and also define uh, the dimension between that and that center, the line, the length of your slot and the radius of your slot. And of course, the height of the slot. It goes black, which means it's fully constrained, of course. You can reposition your dimension. You can also modify it by double clicking on the dimension. Now I can exit and I will make another sketch on the same plane or another plane. I don't really care. I will make a sketch on that plane and maybe get the dimension over there. Okay, so this time I will make it differently. Instead of creating a rectangle, I will create lines. So line, I can double click here, double click, double click, because I got this fit polyline activated. Double click, double click, and double click. So the difference here by double clicking on the, on the curves is that my endpoints are not connected. So in this version, I cannot connect it them automatically in, in this case. But I can make constraint like horizontality or verticality on that. So I can double click here and make it horizontal or vertical. So horizontal. OK. Then I can trim those curves together. So I can trim, click and drag. So I can trim those curves together. And the first one. To check if the curves are connected or not, I can ask for these joint ends. And you can see that this point here, I didn't do it by uh, just to check. And I can connect it, and it's now it's connected. Of course, I can now replug or reconnect that point, or even connect it to the origin. And I got my sketch. And then I can exit. If I look in some other area, uh, I could create a sketch here on that part, but using uh, that shape here, so I need to create a vector for that. So I will just create here a vector, and I will ask the software to find my cone axis, and I will just get that shape. Okay, the points are well defined, and I got my vector just in the middle there. So I can now make a mesh sketch here using a rotational method because I don't have a plane exactly at the right position, but I got an axis. So I will select my axis. Then I will select my plane. The plane is projected automatically 
to the crown. And maybe I want to turn it just to avoid that uh, cone or that revolution alone. I can turn by any degree here and OK. Now I can create my sketch. I can first get my axis. So I put the mouse on the uh, entity, the axis, right mouse click and convert entity. Then from that, I can get up and down. You can see that my curve is black, which means it's fully constrained. And then I can create a line here. Double click on that one, maybe make a horizontal line. I don't really need to be on the path for that. So, okay, I don't need to be on the path. So I will make a horizontal line like this. I'm sure it's horizontal and then I will magnet the path. Then I will need to trim that and that. And for the last one, I will need to make a circle. So circle there, and I will trim that circle with power trim here and there and there, just to be sure that this is connected. If you want to make sure that this one is perpendicular to that one, you can always double click on that one, control click on that one, and perpendicular. So if you want so if you want to make sure that this one is tangent to that one, I will create just a line from that endpoint, touch that circle, and you will get the tangency of that part. So here I got the tangent arc, and then on that one I can make a constraint of horizontality and put that entity to construction geometry. At any point, you can zoom in and re-modify the part, and you can, of course, define the radius on that one and whatever you want in terms of definition. Don't forget to trim again, to trim and trim again the part. So I will make a power trim, and so now my sketch is done. So I can exit the sketch and make a revolution on that. So if I make a revolution, the software gets that. I didn't put that as uh, constraint geometry, so the software is not sure about that feature is the revolution axis and okay. So I can have this feature. So now if I display my part, I can make different things. If I go back to a sketch like that one, I could, if I want to make a symmetry of that sketch, so if I make a mirror, the software asks me what is the symmetry line. I can tell this line here. And then what is the ent entity to sim make symmetry is that one. OK, everything is fully constrained. If I want to make a circle on that one, I can double click on that circle. Or I can make a circle by defining the center and pulling. So if either you adjust it to the part or you can pull it. Again, this should be a slot. So if I go slot, I can click on here and there and the software adjusts automatically a slot. So a slot, ellipse, spline, and things like this. If you want to offset your curves, no problem. Just click offset and define the, the, the offset distance, so two, mm, two millimeters, either direction one, two, or both directions. And okay. Now, if I want to make a fillet there, or a chamfer, it's going to be the same. The fillet is easy because you, I want to make a fillet here, I click here on this edge, then I click and hold the mouse and move the mouse. And then you can adjust when you're okay with that, release the mouse button and you get the radius with the value. Double click on the value and 1.7 should be better. And you got your fillet. If you want to create a construction point, create, create a construction point there and you can put it anywhere you want.